are on. Perfect. Okay, come on in, guys. Perfect. Welcome, welcome. Just let everyone a minute to come in. Um, just to make sure, if you're wondering, if you're in the right place, this is the Kids Club Creating Characters with Bold Lines and Big Shapes class. Let's see. Awesome. Okay. Maybe when you come in, guys, I'm going to pay attention to the chat. And I want to see where people are from. If you can just like type it in and and just see and tell me where you're where you're uh, zooming from, that's just always cool to see. I'm I'm here in Dallas, Texas, so uh, just let me know. Um, we've had classes before. We've had people that live in Poland. I remember one time there was one in Poland and and different parts. Oh, Baltimore, perfect. Thank you, Baltimore. I'm so glad you're here. Um, Sarah from Baltimore. Perfect. Um, anyways, it's been fun to see. And I think it's cool to think about that we're all kind of learning from different spots. That's one thing. I mean, this last few years has been crazy, but I think that for me, um, the ability to connect to people from all over the world has been a huge plus. Um, perfect. So my name is Josh Talbot and I'm a designer here at Michael's, an illustrator, designer, been uh, with the company for a few years and I love to draw. That's my very favorite thing. And I love to do these classes where I get to teach and talk about how to draw and um, how to get some ideas. And I think that's that's something that Michael's when we're, my, my job is to make pictures of Santa Clauses and, and jack lanterns and all that kind of fun stuff. And sometimes we run out of ideas or like, how can I draw Santa in a different way that I've never drawn him before? And uh, so I some of the things we do to, to get ideas, I like to share in these classes. And that's something that we're going to go through today. Uh, I'm looking at a couple things in the chat. Someone's from on Toronto and Ontario. That's awesome. Toronto, Ontario. Welcome. I'm so glad you guys are here again. So cool that we can talk to people across the world. And uh, someone only has dual tip watercolor markers. Perfect. This class is going to be great for anything you have. Um, we are not going to be picky today. Um, I think if anything, we just want to make some big marks and some bold shapes. Um, so whatever you bring is great, is perfect. So um, let me just, I think, yeah, I think we're all here. It sounds like we're about all here. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so like I said, at Michael's, we try to uh, come up with some new ideas. And uh, this is an activity that I like to do when I'm trying to think of what to draw. And it's, taking a big shape and then seeing what can it look like? What can I turn the shape into? Um, I wanna show you guys, I'm gonna share my screen real quick. Let's see, I have some pictures I wanna show you guys. Okay, so this is, this is the class that you signed up for. You saw this image um, and that's kind of how this started. I drew a picture of, if you've noticed her shirt, looks like a scoop of ice cream. And then I, I thought, well, what, what else, what could that look like? And it all of a sudden turned into a shirt and I went with it and made made her into a whole person, like a singer person. It looks like someone's raising their hand. Um, I'm gonna pay attention to that in the Q and A. Oh, okay. Yeah, are we painting today? Yes, paint's good. Yep, we, we, we can bring paint. I've got some, some different things that I'll show you guys in a second. So um, big shapes. And then I wanna show you guys some examples of some art that I've been really jazzed about lately. Uh, that that uh, that I, I want you guys to see. So I bought this book. Let's see. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for one second. This book is called. Oh, I'm frozen. I don't know if you guys. I'm I'm frozen for me. I don't know if I'm frozen for you. Here we go. Mid-century modern graphic design, and it's full of posters and children's books and all sorts of things using these big shapes. Look at this. Do you see that right there? It's been so cool. So I found some of these pictures online that I want to show you guys. So I'm gonna reach, I'm gonna reshare my screen. I feel like it's fun for these classes. I want to bring stuff to you guys to to share. Uh, I think that's important to always be looking at things out in the world and to be getting inspiration from it. So uh, these are just some posters, and a lot of these posters are from different parts of the world, uh, which is really cool. I love to see the um, other designs. It's always inspirational for me to see. 
And I actually don't know a lot of what these languages are. So I, um, I don't know what it says, but I love the way this fish is made of these really graphic shapes. Do you see how like the, his mouth is like a triangle down here, another triangle for where his eye is. And then there's this sailor and the sailor is just blue and the black lines that cut through the sailor are the, from this big black shape behind him. And then that black shape just flows right into that telescope right there on the top. So cool, let's look at another one. This was just like an image of two guys fighting. I don't know what this book is about. I don't speak the language. But again, it's just this big shape and it looks like a person. And then they drew some lines on top of it to be a hand and to be a face. And then like this other face is on top of these yellow shapes. So cool. Um, this one caught my eye just because we have, it's just all shapes. This horse is this big red shape with these little legs, rectangle tail, kind of like, almost like a rectangle body. This princess over here, kind of a bell shape for her dress, really skinny waist, big poofy sleeves. So cool. This one is lines, it's not shapes, but I liked it because it just, I, it was shapes obviously, but they used outlines. And so we can use outlines, we can use different things. And then they kind of cut these shapes up into different smaller shapes to, to form these animals on this postage stamp. So cool. This is uh, from Britain. I can read this one. It's a, a poster that was encouraging people to pick up trash. And look at the way this man is really just a rectangle with a rectangle for an arm. And then this word says tidy. And his arm is part of the eye. I just love the way that those shapes play together. Same with this one. Look at this guy running. It's just a, a rectangle. And his, his head is like, a, I guess, a kind of almost like a triangle shaped nose with a circle eye and he's running and all his legs look at all those legs going all around isn't that so cool i love those shapes I, just so creative look at this guy this is a can you see i in this one see if you can see two different pictures at first i look and i see a guy right in a blue suit with a triangle shape of shirt and a blue face and then wait he he's an airplane do you see that He's also an airplane and he's carrying some packages. I love that. They, there's two, two pictures going on there. We have a, an airplane and a man. This one, ooh, this one's cool. This one caught my eye. Look at that dragon and this sweet little girl up on top. And I just, again, I love these shapes. How, how, how uh, creative this is that they took this, I, I kind of like some different rectangles, put them together and it forms this, this dragon that curls around. And then this one, this one's, can you almost, can you see what this is? It's an anteater, if you can't tell, it's almost hard to tell. Um, yeah, Pete's dragon, I love the comment on Pete's dragon. And if you don't have construction paper, that's fine. That's fine. I think we're gonna, we're gonna show several different ways we can do this. Um, but yeah, this is an anteater licking a little A. Look how big those shapes are. It's almost so big, you can't even tell what it is, but it's an anteater. Look at this one. It's a lobster claw. Can you see that? Boy, that little L. Such big shapes, you can almost not tell what it is. Isn't that cool? Let's stop sharing. Um, I hope that those were fun. That you'd like to see those. And there's, there's tons more. Always be looking for pictures that give you ideas. Um, and if you're an artist, if you're making children's books or you're making comics, um, sometimes it's helpful to look at things like what you're making. Like if you're making children's books, look at other children's books. That makes sense. But also sometimes it's helpful to look at things that are not what you're making. If you're making children's books, maybe you go look at movie posters. Or if you're making, you know, patterns for fabric, go look at children's books. Because some that can lead to more creative ideas. If you're only looking at children's books to make children's books, you're probably going to come up with the same ideas as everybody else. But if you're looking at things that have nothing to do with the other thing, like uh, you'll always come up with more creative ideas. That's why sometimes even going outside for me, going on a walk and looking at the shapes I see, I feel like I always come up with more creative ideas. 
so always have your eyes open. Uh, that's my that's my my pro tip for today is always be thinking of things and trying things. Um, okay, so I want to show a couple things. Let's do the Lindsay. Can we go to the the down pad the down camera for a second? I want to show you guys. Here's that book by Theo Inglis. If you ever want to look that up, great book. Um, some some things I have here. I have and I hope some of these supplies probably were not on the supply list that was um, on there. But again, we're pretty uh, loosey goosey with what you need. Okay, so don't don't stress. If you got something like these things, you'll be fine. I've got some cardstock here. Um, normal white printer paper would be just as would work just as well. I've got some construction paper here in some different colors. Again, if you don't have any, that's that's fine too. Um, I got some scissors, got some daddy scissors and some baby scissors or some kid scissors. So if you're a kid, make sure you're using these kinds. If your mom and dad's around, uh, be safe. I've got some markers here, some um, some different markers, different colors. I got crayons over here, and I've got the oh a glue stick makes yeah glue sticks gonna come in handy. Um, and then these, if you have normal runny glue, that's fine too. And these are super cool, guys. These uh, Creatology are, are Michael's brand. Uh, came out with these not too long ago. I think they're still pretty new. Um, these are paint sticks. They're tempera paint sticks. They almost are like drying with lipstick or something. And they dry almost instantly after you, after you make your shape with them. They're super fun to play with. And so I thought that would be a fun, a fun thing to, to pull out today and, and maybe use. Um, and so that's, that's what I've got. I know I put paint on the list of supplies as well. Feel free to um, use some paint. I hope, um, yeah, I, and it, the, the downside to paint is it does take a minute to dry. And I know this is a short class. So um, just be patient. I guess if it dries, pull out a hair dryer or do something like that. Um, and, or maybe you might have some other tools. We'll go through some other tools that you could use. Um, so to get started, I want you guys, let's just start being, let's get out a piece of paper. Uh, and I want you guys to, to get loosened up. We, we talk about that in, in art classes and things. Want to get some, uh, just start drawing some things, not worry too much about, about what it's going to be yet. So I'm going to quiz you guys. Can anybody tell me what shape that is? Put it in the chat. Anybody? Let's see. So I'm looking at the Q&A. Oh, I'll, I'll put, someone's asking if I can post the name of the book. Yes, I can post that. Oh, I'm so glad that you put the paint stick link, paint stick link in there, uh, Lindsay. Perfect. Yes, a triangle, Sher Sherry and Gabriel. A triangle. Perfect. Okay, shout it out, guys. I'm going to draw some more. Let's see if we can get... Get a bunch in there. Can you guys name these? Put them in there. The chat. Oh, chat is disabled. Put it. Put it in the Q and A. I'm sorry. I, I I keep calling it the chat. Put it in the Q and A. Sorry about that. Circle. Yes. You you guys know this stuff. Okay. What about this one? Oh, diamond. Yep. Oh, yep. Sarah said diamond. Perfect. Okay, guys. These are shapes. I hope you've learned them in school. This one's like an oval, almost like a hot dog. I don't know. I call this a moon when I was a kid, but my kids call it crescent at their school. Perfect. You guys, this is great. This is great. Let me let me just take a fast minute to put that that um, name of that book. So let's see. Type answer. Here we go. The book is called. I'm not a good typer. Modern graphic design by Theo English. Huge, huge wreck. I love it. It's so good, guys. And it's, it's not really a kid's book necessarily, although there is a section about um, children's books in there, but there's just so much good, good stuff. So um, hope that, hope you saw that. Okay, good. So we started here, guys. We started here. Now let's, uh, in the chat, or I mean, sorry, I keep saying chat. In the Q&A, can you guys please start putting put in your favorite animals? I think animals would be a great thing to kind of focus on today. Um, let's start there. And I'm going to start drawing one of my favorite animals while you guys do that for our first one. Okay. So I'm going to try out this paint stick. Okay. 
Can I see that? Okay. So bold lines and simple shapes. I think that was something like that was the name of this class. And while you're starting that, we have um, some entries so far with dog, cat, cheetah, and dinosaur. Oh, perfect. These are great. Okay. This, hmm, hmm. This is going to be a cat. So I got a big triangle. And again, guys, I'm going to do stuff with a bunch of these different mediums. So if I do stuff like with this paint marker and you do it with a pen, that's okay. Or if I do this next shape with a piece of paper and you do it with a marker, that's okay. Please, it's going to look a little different. And I'm going to try a little slow because we're all going to be doing stuff a little bit differently. And that's okay. So I cut out a circle and stick that up there. I wish, I wish we've talked about this before, how we wish we could see what you guys are making. That would be so fun. You should go, one thing is the in stores, they started doing more in-person classes and that's awesome if you can make it to a store. Because not, nothing beats um, being with people and seeing what they're creating. But this is nice too. I mean, there's there's pros to both. Okay, so I've got my circle there. I wonder if you can tell what I'm what I'm gonna, what I'm doing yet. If you put out your guesses, if you want. So I've got a circle and a triangle. Now I think I want to give it some legs. The nice thing about these tempera paint sticks is that you can draw right on top of them with marker or other things like that. So see that? What do those look like? Some legs, huh? And you know what just came to my mind? Look at the way those legs um, went outside that triangle. It makes it look like the paws are white. Maybe we can do that. Maybe we can like do more with that. Hmm. I wonder if we were to take another color. And let's do maybe we use a different tool we haven't used yet. Let's use a crayon. And I'm going to make a square. Right here, you guys can see that. And by the way, I love it when shapes overlap. So if your purple square, I don't know if you can quite see it from where you're at, overlaps your orange triangle. Do you see that? All the better. Oh, because it makes a new color underneath. And I think that's just so cool looking. Look at this. I'm going to make these squares and I think I'm hoping it looks like it's a striped tail. And then on the end, ooh, let's do another shape with our yellow paper. I need to pay attention to the q and I've seen some answers are coming. I wanna make sure if I'm going too slow or too fast or whatever. Oh, good animals, guys. Snake, cheetah. Okay, we're gonna do it all, guys. I want, I hope we can do it all or do as many as we can. So one um, uh, principle, we call them principles of art, is repeated shapes. And so if you can find a way to do um, the same shape more than once, in a design, it makes the design stronger. Um, like one thing you can start to pay attention to, especially in animated movies, is when they design characters, they will do the same shape several times. Um, a really good example that comes to my mind is from a show from a, a while ago, but if you ever watched Aladdin, the Disney movie Aladdin, um, Jafar has so many triangles that's the bad guy if you start looking at him the way his hat is the way his face is his nose everything it's all triangles um and one thing here let me just take a piece of paper for a second when you think about shapes sharp shapes 
are for bad guys. And round shapes are for good guys or happy people. Can you see that? Like you can almost imagine this being like a something scary where this would be. Something happy, right? So I think of that as when you, as you're designing your your uh, characters. Like I'm trying to put as many circles on him. Sometimes you see stick arms for a snowman. Well, if I want him to look friendly, I'm going to put as many round shapes as I can. I put I made his hat round. Do you see that? Because I want I'm I'm trying to make him. I know we're I know we're we're not spending a long time on the snowman. I'll get round shake round cheeks. But just to kind of show you how you can make something look happy or friendly. But back to this lion. I, I'm doing a lion, guys. That's what I'm doing. That's what it is. I spoiled it. It's a lion. So now let's do a face. And what could we use? What I want to see what tool we could use for the face. How I have an idea. Why don't we use this crayon that we already have? And this red one. And I'm gonna do some lines for the main mm. <laughs> bad hair day it's a line with a bad hair day maybe a couple lines there too for his tail and then let's just finish it off i think let's keep it simple let's finish it off with some ears use that orange again and some eyes i'll use this paper There's no right answer, no right or wrong, guys. I hope, again, I wish I could see what you're creating because there's probably a lot of different things that you could do. I mean, even like lions, do lions have striped tails? No, I don't think they do. But it sure looks cool, right? There's a cool movie out there. It's it, again, it's the one that's been out for a few years. It's called The Crudes. And they made a, a sequel of it pretty recently. But I thought that the, the designs of that were awesome because they had like dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures that looked really creative. Let's see. Okay. And so then again, repeated shapes. So I've got a big triangle for its body. Let's see if there's a way we can make a, a triangle for its nose. So I'm gonna do like a, an upside down triangle like that. And since we've talked about happy things, let's make this a really happy lion. Look at that. And then, hmm, where should it be looking? Up, let's make it looking up because it's so happy. It's thinking about its dinner it's gonna have later today. What do you think, huh? A lot better than a finger in the eye. It looks pretty good. So there, there's a lion and we just use some basic shapes and we've got something that it's pretty creative. It's, I don't think I've really seen a lion like that before. Should we do another one, you think? Let's look at the list of animals that you guys put out. And, uh, and, if, you have, and if you have ideas, like put that in the chat too. Like, how about this? Before we, I'll put the line here so you can kind of look at it a little bit if you're still working on yours. Tell me about what you did. Like, put that in the chat too. Is there a certain tool that you're using in a different way than I used it? Or uh, a, a tool that I don't even have out here that you're using that you found some success with? Um, I want to know. Like, what, what, are, what are some things that you're doing? Because that might give us all some ideas of, of how, we can, how we can do things a little differently. Um, so there's so many to choose from, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm going to scroll through a little bit and see what the, 
that if there's one that has multiple votes, multiple people have said it. Um, I think that it might be. Oh, they're all they all have one. Okay, well we no, I guess I see cats and cheetah. We both did a cat. Let's do and oh there's okay, cats, cats, lots of cats. Let's go with uh maybe something a little. I love this peacock idea, Franco. That sounds awesome. Let's do a peacock. I think that's beautiful. Something this is kind of a little more like let's find something, let's do something kind of beautiful. Um why don't we start with our paper? I think that's a, that'd be a fun thing. The cool thing about using cut paper is it kind of, and I think that's kind of one of the things I wanted to get with this class is it kind of um, makes you, it forces you to have to make some creative decisions that maybe you normally wouldn't make. So I'm just going to start cutting and I'm going to see what we can get. I want to do like a long shape because I think about peacocks having like a long neck. But I'm trying not to, I'm trying not to be too careful with it. So we've got some shapes here. This is in, in principles of art, we call this a negative shape. When we took out this piece, it created a negative shape here. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Sometimes you want to look at it and it's, it's fun. I feel like it's almost like a challenge sometimes to say like, what could this be? How could, how could we use this? Do you have ideas? See, it could be, yeah, put them in the chat if you have ideas. This could be its neck, except for I'd be like, what is this shape here if it's a neck? Or maybe this is its neck and has a big head. When I think of peacocks, obviously the big tail. So I'm like, is the is this maybe part of the tail? Could the whole body? Could this be the whole body? Because they do when their tails are down, they have a big, a big tail. Hmm. You know, I think we're I think we're gonna use it like this. I think I'm gonna make the head and the neck like this. I, I have some ideas. So put in the chat, guys. What? is your favorite art project you've ever done? Like what, is there a certain, was it drawing a certain thing or drawing with, or, or painting something? Like what's, tell me about some fun art that you've made before. By the way, someone, oh, was Amanda talked about drawing chickens. Oh, you're drawing your chickens, I love it. I'm drawing, that's so good. Oh, and you're drawing realistic. That's awesome. That's awesome, yep. And maybe we can do that too. If you guys be interested in that, tell me. Okay. So good. Okay. Gotta make sure that's glued down all the way. If it's not, it's okay. Okay. Oh, I had another idea. So I was gonna put the beak here, but maybe I make it twist around here. What do you think? We can do, yeah, I feel like this feels a little bit more unexpected. Uh, so I'm gonna do for a face. I think when I think of peacocks, I think of long eyelashes. I've got a daughter who's now almost seven. Oh my goodness, almost seven, and she draws long eyelashes like that, and then a big smile. And I like doing bird smiles like this. If you do a triangle, and then kind of draw the cut the triangle in half with the line that curls up, you'll see. Look at that. Oh my goodness. And again, I kind of like how it's overlapping a little bit. We might we might mess around with that a little bit more. Okay, so now let's put some feet 
And maybe we use our, let's can make some pink feet. My daughter would love that. I got some big pink fans at my house. And you guys pink fans or other colors, tell me what, to put in the chat your favorite color, you can do that. We've got some really, uh, what would you say? Some really energetic pink lovers at our house too. I have two daughters and they fight over anything that's pink. So there's some legs. It's walking. And sometimes if you do something that's walking, you can put some motion lines like that. So we've got that. And then I want to do this beak. I want to show you guys something that I think is super fun to do. So we've made a little shape here. We're going to color it in. I'm going to purposely color outside the lines. I'm going to color down here and up here. You'll see. I'm probably covering it with my hand too much. See what I'm doing there? Um, back in the day when they would print things, they would uh, basically have to cut out a piece of color and stick it on the print. And if it wasn't on there exactly right, It'd be, they'd say it was like misregistration or it wasn't, it wasn't aligned correctly. And so you'd get little, uh, little accidents like this. Well, artists now sometimes purposely do that because I, I really like it. I like that you kind of see this little bit of white popping up at the top of the beak, a little bit of orange coming below it. It makes it almost look like some light is kind of shining on top of the beak. And I feel like it just gives some movement. It, it gives it more energy than having to fill it in perfectly. So there's some, something to think about. Um, I like work that doesn't have to look perfect. I've got a crayon here. This is a bit uh, like a lighter color. Let's see if we can see it. Oh, I can't see that hardly at all. I want to see if I, I don't have a white. I wish we had a white. Let's see. Is this going to show up? It doesn't show up either. I wish I had a white. Well, if you have a white, that would be really fun to put some color. I guess it kind of shows up. You guys can kind of see that. Anyways, I feel like I know we want to keep moving. I want to do some more, but um, maybe it's going to be subtle. Not everything has to be like you see it really closely. So I'll put some shapes there. Maybe put some dots there. Now, something to think about too, guys, that's really cool is you probably learned in school about your primary colors and secondary colors. Have you heard of that before, secondary colors? And you heard of, um, there's certain colors, complementary colors that look better together. The complementary color of blue is orange. And then when you put the colors on top of each other, it makes a dark color. So it makes brown if you put blue on top of orange. And Josh, if you can hold it up closer to the overhead camera when you're done with that uh, section, yeah, then we could see it. That's perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I know it's a little, it's a little subtle. I wish it wasn't quite as subtle. We might, we'll work with that because you're right. I'm, I'm having trouble seeing it myself, and I'm right here. So let's make those lines red. How about that? I think that's something too, guys. Please, oh please. Don't be too perf don't don't be too uh, worried about your art if it doesn't look quite right the first time you draw it. Just draw some more. We're kind of exploring right now, right? We're trying out some different things. There we go. There we go. You guys can see that, huh? That's probably yes. A lot that better. looks good. Good, good. So I just do like some like lines with a little circle dot on top. I don't know, it's just a little pattern. So now let's just quickly finish out her tail. So let's get some different colors. I have a sheet of red over here. And I'm gonna purposely just cut some, some shapes out that I don't even know what they look like. Ugh. We'll see. That's 
some random scraps. And let's do the same thing with a little bit of orange. Oh, rip the orange a little bit, that's okay. Someone asked what type of paper I'm using. This is construction paper. Let's see. And maybe, you know what, I'm gonna save cutting the orange for just a second because I'm thinking, what if, um, I'm gonna show you guys something. So the red, again, I'm like probably talking about lots of, of uh, art school stuff, but in art school, they talk about different colors being darker and red is one of the darkest colors. Blue is pretty dark too. Whereas like orange or yellow are a little bit lighter. So this red I'm putting on, on her tail, it's a little harder to see, it kind of blends in. And I'll show you guys in a second why I think that's a good thing. So I'm just gonna glue those on there. Thank you so much for being here, guys. I love making art with other people. It's way funner than making it by myself. Let's see. So just gonna put those in there where it makes sense or where it doesn't, it's okay. And I've been conscious of her, but you know what? It's a him because the boy peacocks are the ones with all the bright colors, right? I don't think anyone know there's a peacock expert, but I'm pretty sure the girl peacocks are white, right? Or tan or something. Let's see, one more little piece. I'm gonna fill in these, rip that a little bit. Fill in these little areas here. Kind of. Doesn't have to be exactly filled in. This one I am gonna cut. Just I want I want more of a triangle shape. Oh, so good. Cut paper just gives us so much texture. Okay, so there's that. And remember how I said that um, we I liked how the we call it value. That's the word we use in, uh, in, oh, can you uncover the lion? I'm sorry, guys. Yes, I can. That's the word that we use in, in art to describe something's light or dark. We talk about it having a lighter or a dark value. So these have a pretty similar value. They kind of lighter value, this blue and this, and this red. So I'm going to use now something with a lighter value, like this orange, and I'm, it's going to stand out. It's going to stand out on purpose. And I, what I think I want to do is I want to outline its wing and how its wing kind of folds back. Because really, we've been drawing the back of this bird. As I've been looking at this, it's almost like it's turning away from us and walking away from us. So I'm going to put its a little shape in there, like a little swish shape to be its wing. So this one, I might be a little bit more careful with what it's going to look like. So I'm going to stick this on top. Kind of, I'm just going to kind of try to draw a little bit what shape I want it to be. And I did it with an orange marker, an orange crayon. That's probably not good for you guys. Something like that. And then I'm going to come in. I'm going to cut that out. Watch. Again, if I'm going too, too fast, guys, or too slow, or whatever, please. It helps us to know what you guys are thinking. See, and then that stands up on top of the red and the red and the blue kind of just like push back. You don't even really see them as much. And this can be, this is apart from all of those on top. So I'm gonna put that down. And again, remember we talked about repeated shapes, how if you have a, a triangle some at some point part of your art to put another triangle. The same goes with colors. Um, we love colors and I love using a lot of color, but 
if you use all the colors all the time, your work can kind of start to feel really, it can start to feel busy or, or loud. It's like not sure where to look. So we have an orange here. We've got an orange there in the beak. And orange is complementary of this blue color. And then red and pink. So I feel like we don't want to, I wouldn't want to introduce green at this point or some other color. We can kind of keep it simple. I think the last thing I'm going to do is use that red crayon. And if I remember right, peacocks kind of have like this little thing on top of their head. Something like that. And that now like it's begging for more color. I mean, it's a peacock for goodness sake. More, more something. What if we can? Here, let's just do one more quick thing. I want to move on, guys. I want to do something else. You're probably getting bored. Who knows? But I want just, just a couple more colors, or a couple more shapes, I should say. Yellow. You know, I, I know I said not putting extra color, but yellow could look nice here. Yellow is like related to orange. And again, see how those kind of like stand on top of that red. Obviously, the shape's on top, but it's, it's, it's not the red to me. The red is not fighting for attention, it pushes back. Okay, perfect. Okay, guys, let's see if we can do. Two. I'd love to see if we can do at least two more. Um, do you want to put? I know you put, are you've already put stuff in the chat. Is there any mis specific ones? you want to put in the chat that you want to see before I start. I love this one, put snake. That's awesome. Um, oh, Janaya likes to do calligraphy with markers. That's wonderful. There's a lot of, you guys have done a, said a lot of good things. Tiger, cat, and cheetah. Should have done one of those. We did a tiger tail. Let's see. Here we go. Dog. Dog's good. Dog. Should we do a dog? I think we do, we do a dog. Yeah, dog. More dog. Oh, I see more dogs. Okay. We're doing a dog. That's what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> so, Josh, I did just look up a, a quick fact about peacocks, and it says that their tail feathers can reach up to six feet long and make up about 60% of its body. And and even with those proportions, this bird um, can still fly. What? That's crazy. Not very far, but it, it can fly. It can fly. Man, what a beautiful thing. Aren't we lucky? Again, guys, keep, keep an eye out for those things all around us and use it for inspiration. Okay, I'm going to put this to the side and let's do a dog and maybe one more thing. Let's see if we can, let's make it a challenge. Sometimes you're know, challenging yourself to do things quickly or to do things slowly, I guess, is really helpful. So let's do a dog. I'm gonna turn the paper this way this time. And so we started with paper last time. I mean, and then before that, we started with the with the marker. How about we start with a crayon this time? I haven't started with crayon yet. And uh, let's just draw some scribbles. Can anybody scribble? Raise your hand if you know how to scribble. Can you scribble? I can scribble. I think most kids can. Let's see. Hmm. Most everybody can scribble. Hmm. It's looking pretty good. See, we made a shape. We made a shape. Just like we started with all other shapes, we made a shape, right? Now to decide what to do with this shape. See, if I think if we started off at the very beginning, knowing exactly what kind of shape we need, that, that's fine and that's good. But this allows us to kind of think creatively, like, what are we going to do with this? And if anybody has ideas, put them in the chat. Let's do this together. Someone asked for an elephant. Oh, this would, this would be a great elephant, too. You know? You know what, guys? Let's make, let's do something for both people. I think we just need to do both. So watch this. Watch this. Let's do the dog over here. 
Oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to use crayon. We already used crayon. Let's do I'm gonna use a different color we haven't used yet. I've got some green here, some great green. And let's do a dog head. And I think I want to do kind of like a the bottom of a hot dog, like a hot dog cut in half. I'm gonna paste it. That looks like a like a sheep. Now look at it. Oh my goodness, guys. Oh, that's not a glue stick. What <laughs> that's not a glue stick, you silly paint stick. I need a glue stick. Um Sometimes, guys, I think that's the funnest part is do something where you're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to look like something. That makes it kind of cool. That's here. So that's going to be our dog head. And then let's get our paper from before. And let's use this shape. Look at this. Watch this, guys. Watch this shape. I'm going to use the same shape. Cut all the way around it. All of a sudden, we have this long shape. Oh, it's not code line. This long shape, and this can be our this can be our trunk for our elephant. So let's paste that down right there. Josh, can you push your paper just a little oh, bit? Oh, the I frame. just saw that. Lindsay, thank yep, you for helping perfect. me out here. That's what we're here for. This is. Want to see? We guys, want you guys see what I'm doing? Okay. Whew. Okay, let's see if we can do this, guys. It's going to get kind of crazy. Okay, so we've got, I, I think now it's time to bust out something that can draw some lines. Let's get some lines. So I'm going to do, no, you know what? Nope, sorry, change my mind again. I want to do another shape. This one's like a half circle for our elephant ear. What time are we at? 48. We're doing fine. And how about another shape? Let's go back to our blue for our dog ear. And I wonder if we can use some of these shapes still. What if we took this and we made like a point? And we swung back around and made like a raindrop shape. I hope you guys can see there are no right or wrong answers here. Please, when you're making your work, do not do not uh, be too hard on yourself. Do you know what happens when you're too hard on yourself? You stop making art because it's not fun anymore. And even if you are making art, it it uh, doesn't come out as good. So allow, your, allow yourself some space to just kind of have fun. And that's what these classes are for. There's our, there's our dog ear. And you're probably going like, what the heck? This doesn't look like anything. Well, let's hope we can make it look like something. We'll see. So now I think I want to bring out my marker for some lines. So let's start with our dog. Let's give our dog an eye. And a nose. That could have been a paper nose, but it's okay. A nose and a mouth. And I think we need to do a tongue, don't you? I think we need to do it pink. Okay, now let's come over into our, our elephant. So the end of an elephant trunk, I think it has like a circle. And two, you know, I, probably, I don't know why I do that circle. I probably could have just done two circles, but that's the end of our trunk. And then I'm going to do some lines like that. Going up, can you guys see that okay? The blue is kind of hard. I feel like the blue is dark. It's a really dark blue. It's hard to see the lines on the blue. I just realized that. Sorry if that's hard for you guys to see. And then an eye. And hmm, I 
think I'm gonna do one more shape, guys, of paper. And I'm gonna use that little that little curve I've made. I'm gonna make another curve with it. You guys know what I'm doing? A tusk. I think if we had a tusk, it would instantly, it would it'd make us go, oh yeah, that's an elephant. I can tell. And that's something too, when you're designing things, guys, especially since we're designing things pretty abstractly. Abstract means where it doesn't look real. You got to pick some of the most important symbols, most important shapes that tell you, oh, I know what that is. And so I feel like that tusk, to me, it helped look like an elephant. And then some big elephant feet. And I like doing three half circles for the elephant toenails. And then let's do some dog paws. Kind of like we did the, like the lion paws over here, three lumps on the end of a stick. What do you think? What do you think? Is that too silly? Maybe we can make it just a little sillier. Maybe like they're at a party or something. I don't know. I don't know. What 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 are we doing here? I love it. I think it looks great. I think it's a lot of fun. And like, who would have thought to do that? I don't. I I didn't think of doing that until you guys said it. And then you put dog and elephant. And I thought let's do it together. So it's so much fun, guys. There's no wrong answer. Okay, 53. Let's do we another do, one. We do have a suggestion, though, to make their tails. Oh, their tails. You're right. Hmm. hmm. How would we do that? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That's such a good idea. Look, this, to me, this tusk that I talked about, the tusk, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't that look like the dog's tail? What if, like, that's the whole idea? Maybe the, the tusk over here with these motion lines is the wagging dog's tail. And then the, and then, oh, guys, it's brilliant. This is, you guys are so good. Have you guys ever heard of a fez? It's a, it's a, it's a kind of hat that they wear in different parts of the world. It's like a little cube, a little square. And on the top is a tassel like that. And elephant tails look like that. So what if it's like, so there's the elephant tail back over here and the dog tail right over here. Good idea, guys. Oh, <laughs> I love it. This is what happens, guys. This is what happens when you when you draw together with people. And we, we can go back in. I, I kind of want to draw some color in these shapes, kind of like the way we did with the bird's beak, where it's kind of off. I think that'd be kind of fun. Hold on a second. I want to move on. I want to do one more before we go. We got to keep to our challenge. I just saw that shape and I was like, I got to draw it. I got to draw that. And I did it red because I wanted to kind of match that ear over there. And then I'm going to make the party hat green because I want to match the other green shape we've got. Remember, we talked about trying to repeat colors. Oh, you guys, this is so much fun. I love it. Thank you so much for your participation and the things that you guys have said. And that pom-pom's got to be blue. It's just got to be. Look at that. Woo! <laughs> we have another finished illustration, guys. We're on a roll. Okay, let's do one more. What do we got? We got five minutes. Five minutes. Let's see. I'm going to try. I want to see if I can get those all on the screen still. It's going to be tricky, tricky, tricky. It's close. It's pretty close. Okay, let's do one more. Um, and I love that you said it's hilarious. It's so good when you can make yourself laugh, guys. When you're alone in the studio drawing and you can make yourself laugh, like that's the best. I make other people laugh. Okay, that's even better. Giraffe. I'm seeing lizard. Let's do them all. Okay, let's see if we can do that. Okay. Here we go, here we go. Okay. We have some yellow paper. We're, let's see, I wanna use the piece I already started cutting on. 
Um, okay, I can't find my yellow paper, so let's have to use a yellow paint thing. Okay, so when I think of giraffe, I think of a long yellow neck. Okay, and when I think of lizard, I think of a long lizard tail. Didn't quite turn out just quite like it. You know, it's cool if it, sometimes guys, if I have a shape like that that didn't quite come out as clean as I wanted, I like to put just another line on top of it to kind of kind of cover it up. So there's our lizard tail with its lizard diamond shape. And uh, let's see, what's the other one? Shark. Oh man, guys, this is gonna get kind of crazy. Let's do let's do a shark and let's get our blue paper. Oh, we're almost out of time. I know, guys. I know. I know. Look at this. Look. I saw this shape here. I'm like, that's got to be the shark fin. I'm like, that's just got to be. So let's just cut here and here. Oh, okay, there's a little bit of a stretch, guys. Does that almost look like a, like the back end of a, of a of a of a shark, some sort of fish? Hmm. No, not not as much as I'd want it to. Uh oh no, here. Well, we're going dolphin today, guys. I know you said shark. I'm sorry, but I, I, like, does that kind of look like a dolphin to you? Kind of looks a dolphin to me. Glue that down. When I was in school, I remember when I was in art school, my teacher said that I needed to get better at knowing what I was supposed to draw before I drew it because a lot of times I'd just be drawing and just draw whatever the paper looked like. And sometimes, you know, if you're doing an illustration job and they tell you to draw a shark and you draw a dolphin, they would say, um, I wanted you to draw a shark, not a dolphin. Oh, so sometimes that happens. Let's see. So there's our dolphin splashing. And I want to do a different, something different for the, for the head. So this is our, our giraffe, giraffe heads. I feel like I try to do that kind of a shape. We're almost there. We're almost out of time. Okay, guys, this has been great. We may not get this finished. If you have a couple of minutes, I guess you can stay. I'm not sure if that's allowed. Yes, you can go over if you need to. Okay, just for a second, guys. There's our giraffe head. I feel like it just makes me want to draw some giraffe spots too. And then lizard, and that's a lizard tail. So we got to do the bottom half of the lizard and let's use some paper again. I want, where's my red? Oh. And we use a shape we've got here. We can, let's do this, look. It's always important to take the lid off the glue stick, guys. Just, just a little pro tip there. Okay, just a couple of minutes. Let's do a couple of minutes. I, want, I don't want to keep you guys too long. And if you have to hop off, hop off. It's okay. But we're just, we're just on a roll, guys. We got, we got to finish. It's like, mom, I got to finish my video game. This is way better than a video game. And if you'll push your page back up in the screen a bit. Perfect. Yes, thank you. I'm trying to decide. What do you guys think? Should it line up there? I'm trying to decide how we want that to be. Or should we show more of the neck? I think I kind of like this like little triangle shape it makes. And this little white shape, that's a really cool shape. That's gotta be something. Cause I'm thinking what this will be is then we'll put the lizard here.
and it's like crawling down. Something like that. Hmm. Hmm. Now I really that is so that is so creative. I love it. Oh, good. Well, I just, now it's like it's like an undone story. I can't leave it there. <laughs> What's happening? What's happening right there? I need to. Uh, do you guys have any suggestions? I think. I'm just looking at it. I'm like, what needs to happen there? Snake. I see that pop through. I don't know if that, I, that's kind of an old one, I think. It looks a bit like a seal. Hmm. Hmm. I love these are good suggestions, guys. Maybe a snake. I could see it being like a snake head. And like maybe this, maybe this is the tail of the snake coming through. Or maybe just some like water splash. I think if we did like this from the dolphin, does that help us? Maybe it's gotta be a snake head, guys. I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out. But anyways, anyways, ah, man, it's gonna, it's gonna, I'll figure it out. Or maybe it's just a, a leg. Maybe it's just a white space. We have another leg going here. Our leg kind of almost is already shaped like a, that's what I did. I kind of put the leg in that shape. Huh. We'll see, guys. We'll see. More to come. And you can always you can always tweak it. But thank you guys for being here. I hope this was fun. And I hope that it kind of gave you guys some ideas of stuff you can do on your own. Here, can you switch it back to my face real fast, Lindsay? Yeah, I, I hope this gave you guys some ideas of things you can do on your own. And uh, but it's got a leg, so it can't be a snake. I see that now. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, and and just again, don't don't judge it. And not every drawing has to be a good drawing. Like this one, in the end, if we're like, you know what? I just don't think that was what I wanted to draw. It's okay. I promise the next one you do will be better because you took the time to make this one. Um, so thank you. Just keep drawing and we'll talk again next time, okay? We'll see you guys. And, and let us know if you have any questions or you know, you can, you can write us back if there's anything else in their comments you have. So, okay. Okay, oh, and Janaya, thanks so much for saying this is your favorite class. Okay. See you guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you. Bye-bye.